Salam. I wanted to share some thoughts on feminism from the perspective of a Muslim woman living in the West and my journey through it because I think it could be relatable or beneficial for some Muslims living in the West, inshallah, or anyone interested. Uh, it's a sensitive, controversial topic, but it's also profoundly influential on people's identity as well as their beliefs. And most importantly for me, it can affect a person's iman. So I think it's worth discussing, inshallah. Um, this discussion is uh, delivered with the best of my intentions, inshallah, um, with compassion for everyone, respect. And if I say anything wrong, it's from me. And if I say anything right, it's from Allah. So bismillah, let's begin, inshallah. Um, I wanted to talk about this idea of Feminism being a very complex and complete ideology as distinguished from an opinion on an issue. So like an opinion or a stance might be, um, oh, I'm pro-life, I'm pro-choice or whatever the case may be about this, uh, an abortion debate, for example. Feminism is not one opinion of being pro-women's rights and pro-equality between the genders. Feminism is a complete, a complete ideology. And so what that means is it's a whole bundle of opinions based on an internally consistent framework or way of thinking and understanding um, morality and justice. So it's basically a religion. Um, the reason I say this, well, so in Arabic, the term deen means religion, but it also means way of life. And, um, your religion is that which your mind turns to for guidance and that which your heart loves the most. And so a lot of people are born into a religion, but these days um, where I live, politics often ends up becoming people's religion. So people on the far right, people on the far left of the um, Western political spectrum will find themselves um, being guided by the political rhetoric and ideals um, like on an ideological level of the humans who create these ideas and discuss and have often quite reactionary beliefs in response to each other. And so they're like, they're, they're not for something so much as they are against the other thing. And um, so again, they might be born into Christianity or Islam or Judaism, whatever the case may be, but they find themselves... Um, like loosely, barely connected to their religion of origin and feeling increasingly disconnected from it as they grow older and dive deeper into the political ideology. And um, it's not to say that a Muslim can't have a political ideology or an ideology outside of Islam that um, like intrigues them or that they identify with, but it's more, let's put it this way, I think a Muslim could certainly have various opinions in their cultural context, hopefully based on their Islamic understanding of right and wrong, but they shouldn't have an entire ideology in addition to Islam because Islam is a complete, consistent ideology. And to add anything to that ideology is to replace it, right? Um, you can't, you don't have two hearts. You have one heart and it will be dedicated to that which you view as the source of guidance. Is Do you view society's perceptions and opinions as the source of guidance? Do you view your culture as the source of guidance? Or do you view Allah as the source of guidance? So when I was growing up in the United States, uh, I would use the term feminist to describe myself because I equated feminism with uh, women's rights. And I think a lot of Muslim women might relate to this. Um, so because fighting against oppression is a very core value in Islam, the idea of standing up for the weak and vulnerable and oppressed. That's very, very like fundamental Islamic message right there and core value for us. And because of that, I think a lot of Muslims growing up in the West 
rather naturally find themselves resonating with some of the ideals of feminism, which are based on, um, like they use rhetoric of the privileged versus the marginalized. And um, like some of those ideas, there is certainly overlap. And so it's not that, um, you know, like Islam versus feminism, these two opposing values. No, not at all. It's um, like Islam is a worldview. Christianity is a worldview. Feminism is a worldview grounded in Western individualism, which is inherently at odds with Islam, but not everything about feminism is at odds with Islam, just like not everything about Christianity is at odds with Islam. Two quick points I'd like to add. First of all, a lot of Muslims wonder why Islam can't be compatible with other ideologies, That, and the reason they ask is largely because they have not been exposed to their own religion as much as they have been exposed to the society in which they are a minority. Um, if you've ever wondered why Islam can't be compatible with other ideologies or why you can't kind of like have two religions at the same time, um, ask yourself this. Um, if you believe the Quran is the truth, have you ever felt a cognitive dissonance and a deep intellectual and emotional discomfort when reading ayat of the Quran about gender. If so, and this is a common experience for Muslims in the West, Muslim women in particular, uh, this is likely because we don't fully understand um, the context of the ayat, but also the like larger framework for the way gender is conceptualized in Islam and the harmonious roles of everybody in the family and the um, the sense of community and all of these like deeper ideas aren't in your immediate grasp in your mind because they don't surround you in what you are in your lived reality uh, on a day to day in the West. The second point I wanted to add is that a lot of Muslim women tend to gravitate toward feminism in a self-defensive way. This was definitely true for me. People um, often will say, oh, hijabis are oppressed. And you don't like for people to see you as oppressed. You know you aren't oppressed. So in order to compensate for those claims and sort of push back against them, uh, a lot of Muslims will wear feminism as a badge to say, see, I'm a hijabi and I'm a feminist. Uh, so as to say that I am not oppressed. I am, you know, a very like independent and strong person, which of, of course, alhamdulillah, you are. We are independent and strong people and Islam does teach us to be strong people and strong women. Um, but when you like wear the badge of feminism to get that point across, it's like, appeasing the person who's looking down on you in a sense or rather in some cases i've noticed that when i called myself a feminist muslim doing that didn't make feminists see islam for the liberation it is for women but rather it made people see me as moving away from my quote unquote, oppressive Islamic upbringing and toward the feminism that they believed would set me free. So when I used their terminology and identified with their views as much as possible as a diplomat to sort of highlight our similarities in our values in an effort to defend my views and make people understand them, it often would backfire on me in the sense that I was erasing a uh, part of myself in order to be more seen by them. Essentially, when I was growing up, I conflated feminism with women's rights. And I thought basically that those that meant that's all that feminism meant. It meant you believe that people are equal. And of course, you know, who doesn't believe that? There are people who don't believe that, but I don't want to meet them, you know, like um, God created every soul to be sacred, dignified, and um, equal in value, right? That doesn't mean we're all exactly the same. We might have uh, slightly different fates and circumstances and, 
and um, abilities and considerations, but everyone's equal. And so to me and to a lot of Muslims, especially when I was younger, uh, the idea of feminism meant that, that you believe in that equality. And often the messaging is like very simplistic, re simplistically reduced to that. Um, but feminism has many waves in Western ideology. Uh, it has actually roots in white supremacy, interestingly enough, because the suffragette movement, like the first wave about um, the women's rights to vote, which obviously is a very good thing. If there's voting, then everyone should be able to vote um, or like it shouldn't be gender based. But um, they they had this platform where they said, hey, we can um, allow white people's values to succeed against other people's values or over other people's values if we get more white people to vote. So let's allow women to vote too. And so <laughs> um, it's very interesting the way each wave of feminism is like situated in its historical context in that sense. So um, obviously, like as different waves of feminism went on, there are a lot of opinions that do clash with Islam not the um, idea of equality between men and women, but a lot of the like degradation of the definition of gender, um, the idea of like the individual, like anyone can be and do anything. Um, that idea is like a sweet sentiment, but I think pretty naive. Um, and in a way that like ends up harming the vulnerable rather than benefiting them, even though it, it has positive intentions if I give it a generous reading. So um, then on the other side, you have people who are in the West fed up with um, all of the craziness that that can come from the like logical extreme of that view. And they end up um, going to the opposite extreme in a reactionary way where they are like proudly misogynistic. They're angry. Uh, they're very angry against women. They um, their whole identity seems to be around that anger toward women and you know how they're all man hating or whatever and they they just have this sort of like oh men men should be strong and angry and like oh i don't like how you've like eroded all definitions of gender so i'm going to build them up to be like very extreme and rigid and it's it's neither of those right with islam it's it's the, that um, rather than men versus women it's men and women it's not um, I've heard it described as not uh, competitive, but cooperative, that the genders, uh, men and women live in harmony and take care of each other. And the reason for this is because we don't have the individualistic mindset. The moment that your worldview is dependent on the individual, you have a problem because uh, there is no one default human, right? <laughs> like individuals are diverse and um, they rely on each other. And there's one really, really basic division, which is gender, um, where men and women really rely on each other. And, and we both need each other. Like Allah has created us. He is al-ghani. He is free of need. And he is al-wakil. We rely on him. Um, we are in need. Men are in need and women are in need of each other and of Allah. He has created us humble, relying on each other, taking care of each other. So individualism does not work for us. So my advice to um, any Muslims out there is to really um, stay away from the culture wars and the toxicity involved therein and rather um, get to know your deen better uh, because gender is such a sensitive subject in the West. Um, like no one is happy. I, I can tell you on any side of the discussion, everyone, um, like there's even a growing movement of, um, it's called the D-trans community. These children who went through a gender transition surgery and then they um, found that their the surgery didn't help them in the way they hoped it would, that they, you know, they had this distress about feeling that they were born in the wrong body and they should be the other gender. And then when they went through the gender reassignment surgery, the distress didn't go away. It just kind of shifted. And um, it's kind of like, well, yeah, you try to give a physical solution to a psychological problem. The distress was, was something you felt. Like it, it wasn't that you were physically unhealthy. And um, so this growing community of people who have been trying to detransition, they were rushed 
to uh, transition when they first had inklings that you know they were born in the wrong body by doctors and and mental health professionals who they trusted um, because they were the adults and they were the professionals and these kids like had barely gone through puberty and they were um, rushed to this procedure because it supported the agenda of the medical professionals which is highly unethical um, now this growing community of children they're literally children like they're teenagers and and very young adults um, they have become activists they travel the country they travel around trying to spread their message that um that like there is such a thing as detransitioning as um like when they tried the, the, what the solution they were hoping for didn't pan out for them the messaging they were given was um politically motivated and not delivered with mental health care in mind right so um then they try to like go through the process of um going back to their original gender but they have had some invasive uh surgeries body parts removed you know chemicals pumped through them and so it's you see it's heartbreaking because then they're ostracized by um both people who have the um, liberal agenda and people who have the conservative agenda and it's just there's a, like a lack of compassion and a lot of people just feel confusion confusion about who they are and um, who they're supposed to be and what they believe in and this confusion the Muslim community is not immune from it and so um, you find that uh, it's very sad because our Dean is beautiful but we don't know it. A lot of Muslims don't know their deen. It's like more their identity than their beliefs, by which I mean like they, they might like wear a hijab and like outwardly look Muslim, but they might not be very well read in Islam because their surroundings aren't Muslim in the West, right? So they're much more well versed in these like deep intellectual ideas in the right and the left. And often Muslims feel like forced to pick a side and we just don't, like Islam doesn't fit neatly into either side. It is its own comprehensive ideology. And so I encourage you to start seeing um, different schools of thoughts as religions, as a dian, right? A deen um, in the sense that like each school of thought is its own complete comprehensive system and you can't just mush them together uh, because you're kind of kidding yourself when you do that. So it's like you it feels comforting to check a box or find an identity in the like few choices you're offered around you. But the choices you're offered in the West are very fake and polarized. And um, like why bundle up all of these opinions together and they're all man made anyway. So it's it's just it stalls discussion. And um, it, it, it makes the conversation not very productive when there's all these reactionary beliefs. And so among Muslims, you see people who feel confused and then they oftentimes you'll see um, Muslim women who begin to really identify with uh, liberal feminist ideology that is secular. And you will begin to see um, some Muslim men um, like have that opposite reaction and really begin to identify with uh, conservative, like very far right ideology that has some misogynistic undertones in a reactionary, angry fashion. And I see both of these groups as um, having lost their way from right guidance and Surat al Mustaqeen, the straight path. Wallahu alam, Allah knows best. This is um, my personal observations based on my own journey, based on what I've heard other Muslims talk about. Um, that often Muslims will go through this journey in the West where they'll like be exposed to all these Western ideas and they'll kind of like pick one <laughs> in a reactionary or self-defensive way because they feel like they have to. And it, it does really feel like that when you live here, um, especially when you're a teenager, like you want to like, I convinced myself that I was being a diplomat in um, using uh, like Western ideology, like Western ideological terminology to like be able to spread my message and Islam and Al-Haq. Like I, I convinced myself that by engaging in these discussions using their terminology, I would be able to connect with them and help them understand where I was coming from. But um, like over time I saw, oh, I'm not influencing them. They're 
they're influencing me. Like I don't need to dedicate my life to addressing this audience. I should be focusing on um, my own beliefs and not so focused on how my beliefs are perceived by others. Um, I was thinking the other day, Surat Al-Kafirun, um, very beautiful, fascinating, profound surah, subhanAllah. It's amazingly relevant for today, uh, especially for Muslims living in the West, because it tells you how to um, conduct yourself with people of different beliefs. And I used to think of it always, subhanAllah, as um, like telling us, just as telling us how to like tell others about our beliefs, like how to how to speak to others, how to set boundaries with others of different beliefs to say like, look, I'm not going to believe what you believe. You have your thing. I have my thing. And I thought of it as like, this is a way to like set a boundary respectfully and um, and like present yourself to others. But now I also understand it as an amazing surah to present to yourself to remind yourself when you are surrounded by people who have so many different confusing, conflicting opinions that you know are less rational and less compassionate and less well formed out than what uh, Ar-Rahman has given us, which is already the perfect deen, subhanAllah. And yet um, it's intoxicating to see these distracting viewpoints because they surround you for Muslims in the West. So Surat Al-Kafirun reminds us that like, you don't have to pick. You don't have to pick a side in the Western individual secular battles. You know, like you can abstain from that. You can say, I'm not um, feminist. I'm not anti-feminist. I'm I'm my own thing. It's not um, like you don't get a monopoly on the values you are claiming you have a monopoly over, right? Like um, everyone claims that their ideology is uh, synonymous with peace and love and goodness and truth, right? And um, yeah, Islam does that too, because we believe it comes from Al-Haq, the truth, God, and Ar-Rahman, <laughs> the most compassionate, merciful God. So um, the idea that all of us uh, would have to pick a side in, um, in these different uh, like debates is silly. It's like beneath us because it's man-made. We don't, we don't need to, we can have interesting discussions with people that are nuanced without needing to um, completely conform to a side and use all of their terms and like dive headfirst into their ideology. It's like, we should retain our ideology, our sense of self, our um, love of our Dean and our knowledge of it. Like, that's what we should be studying and engaging in. And I say this to remind myself as well. Um, but as I got older, I stopped using the term feminist to describe myself, not um, because I stopped loving women's rights and the rights of the oppressed, but because I do love those. And I find that Islam, the term Muslim already captures that better than anything else ever could. And um, like the term feminist means very different things to different people, depending on who you ask. So um, it was like doing more harm than good to use that term uh, and just like throw it around and assume it means the same thing to everyone. Um, so it's, it's funny the way ideologies will present themselves as not ideologies. They will like, they'll be very, like there'll be literal academic theories written about topics, but people will present them as um, like just basic truths. And it's like, no, this is a religion. <laughs> Call it what you want. I know it's man-made and you you acknowledge that it's man-made, um, but these are religions. So um, be careful what you find yourself turning to for guidance. Uh, like instead of Islam, when you find yourself, whenever you're like, trying to think about the morality of an issue or some like complicated subject and Islam doesn't even enter your mind, but you are a Muslim. Um, that's how you know you've kind of taken a few steps too deep into dunya and um, like you've, you've failed to remember the lesson of Surat Al-Kafir and the idea that we should like bear in mind, even when reminding ourselves, um, I this is your religion. It's not my religion. I don't need to 
twist my religion into the shape of what you believe. What you believe is a whole other system and that's fine. You have your thing. I have my thing. So it's not to attack other people, but to stand firm in what you believe. Um, there's such a pressure to conform to just whatever happens to be around you or like engage in all of the back and forth. So those are my thoughts. I don't want to keep repeating myself in circles. I think I've gotten the main idea out and inshallah it's um, interesting or beneficial to somebody. Assalamu alaikum.